Trish Stratus here with a little role reversal. Today on Off the Record, Michael Landsberg will be off the record. We'll be asking questions like, what's it like to be a diva? What's it like to be a Canadian in the WWE? And most pressing on all your minds, will you pose for Playboy, Michael? <laughs> I don't think I want to start it, but what the heck? Bring it on. with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Cake Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Over the course of our six plus years, we've done a couple of dozen one-on-one -on -one interviews with people associated with wrestling. Different rapports with different people. Some I'm meeting for the first time. Others are friends, but I think Trish Stratus, you and I and this show off the record have a very different perspective and relationship. You are a friend of almost everyone here. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. This is great. Okay. This is going to be fun. Yeah. I think at least it's going to be fun for oh, me. I, I sure Let me ask you this. Um, one of the hardest things to do mm -hmm. as a woman in the world of wrestling is keep your dignity, to keep your poise to stay who you are, to, to continue to get respect just as a person. Mm -hmm. How do you characterize and place respect when it comes to fame and money, those three things? What's most important? Oh, respect, hands down. Because I think that the, the fame and the money, all that comes later. You have to kind of earn a status within a show or within a product, and then that all comes naturally afterwards. If you listen to wrestling fans, they will chant things to the women that, that have really hung their hat, so to speak. On, on being beautiful and sexy and mm -hmm. taking clothes off and looking a certain way. One of the things that people have never done with you is chant puppies, for instance, as they will do for other women, or take it off. It seems to be something else for you. Why is that, do you think? Well, I'll tell you what, it, there was a point where it was puppies and take it off and stuff, but that's because I think that's really, that was the, the role that women had within the show. And I think we've definitely, the role of the woman has evolved to such a point now where we don't even go there anymore. Or there's that aspect of it, but it's a separate aspect. But are you talking about women overall, or are you talking about just you? Because other women still hear it, and other right? women still portray themselves. And this is not a knock on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you do is all about making a living. And those people make a living from the characters that they have carved out. But, but you've been different. So is it different for you or for women in general? Um, I think what I've done is probably, I've done a good balance of the two. I've gone out there, and I, you know, I understand the sex appeal, and I understand what the woman the role we play as women and as divas on the show, but I've gone out there and I've proven myself within the realm of the sport. You know, I've gone out there and I've, I've, I've entertained, I've been athletic at the same level as the men, I believe. You've taken bumps, of which course, is a right. huge thing. Right. Which was your plan right from the start, right? Absolutely. To say, I can do what men do. I mean, this is just an example we're watching here of some of the bumps that you have <laughs> taken. No matter yep. how athletic you are, your company is never going to make you the number one superstar in the company when it comes to taking bumps because you are, at the end of the day, still a woman. Well, I can say that I'm definitely, I know that I'm a prominent um, character within the show, and I know that each time I go out there and I develop my character a little bit more, and I, you know, make my presence felt a little bit more out there, and I'm, I'm that within the show, and I can feel that, and I know the difference when I walk out and I do my performance and I get that same energy and that same vibe from the crowd. I'll tell you what, um, at WrestleMania 18, um, I finished my match, and I went up to the Skybox, and I watched the Sky Dome, and it was Vince and Hogan in there. And it was like, I watched, I was like, wow, and I was excited, and I was into the moment as well, and I saw them reacting, and I'm like, this whole, the whole wave of excitement throughout the crowd, and I thought, wow, it really dawned on me right there to say, they just reacted exactly the same for our match. And that just blew me away, because that just meant that we have that same appeal, and we, they are that into our, our movements and our actions out there, and we've developed that liking and that following, and it meant a lot to me. So, you know, to see it and put it in that perspective was amazing. As you talked about moments ago, respect is important for you, and you have kept your dignity in the ring for sure. Is there anything that you've done that, that you've regretted when you look back and said, you know, I didn't like that storyline. If I had a choice, I wouldn't do it again. Maybe I went too far. No, I have no regrets. Every, the only thing I would go back, I go back and I say I would tweak things to better get a message across or, or you know, my performance could be a little bit different on that regard. Barking for Vince? You know what? Everyone asked me about that, and I'll tell you to this day, I would still do that very segment at that point in my career. You know, it was like, it was definitely necessary for, you gotta understand, I was in a story with Vince McMahon, and um, I'm playing this character, and people are buying it, because of course it's with Vince, and it, I, you know, I knew there was gonna be a turn. I know that, I knew, you know, there was gonna be a payoff, and to me, as long as there's a payoff, I'm, co I'm cool with it. I, if every action I can do in the ring, and if it's justified by storylines, or by meaning, then I'm cool with that. And when we did that, we discussed it, very, you know, he knew I would have, you know, maybe a concern with it. We talked about it, and we knew, as long as he can promise me that from this point on, we're gonna turn this into this and develop it into another story. And from there on, I mean, I, I watched that back, and in that moment, I, I, I have so much sympathy for Trish Stratus, the character who I hated 
two minutes before that segment started. So to me, it meant a lot, and it, it developed the story further, developed my character story. And so when if it's about developing character, about developing the story, and, mm -hmm. and as you said, the payoff, mm -hmm. Why not appear naked or semi-naked in Playboy? I mean, many, many other women in the WWE have done it. You it's hit been it right tasteful. There. You hit it right there. Really? Many, many other women have done it. So where's the payoff? You know, I, 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 I thrive on like going out there and doing groundbreaking things. I really like to separate myself from the others. I really try to go out there performance-wise. Um, what I do in the ring, my attire, everything I do, I try to really separate myself as much as possible. And, and you, you know, that's in life. You have to do that. You have to stand out in order to... Well, none of the women have appeared in Hustler, so if you're looking to groundbreak, so that's, that's why, why not? I'm <laughs> holding out for Playboy for Hustler. You just, we broke the story right here. Are you a diva? Think yes. of the word and what that means. Okay, I can say that we've redefined the word diva. What does it mean? I like to say that the word diva in our realm, in our world, means a woman who is athletic, who is entertaining, beautiful, strong, sexy, and a woman that's making it in a man's world. So one of the things that you have been different at is, at least publicly, and to the people I've talked about, you have never been linked with another person romantically backstage. Mm -hmm. That no one has ever seen you and, and suggested that you're having an affair or sleeping with or having a relationship with mm -hmm. another individual. Yet every other woman on the roster whose name we threw out has been linked with someone on the roster. Why is that? You know, I'm, I've always been really adamant about focusing on what I do. And with, even when I was in university, I mean, I was completely absorbed in my world of what I was accomplishing at the time. And I completely focused, and I believe that by focusing that much, that's how I've made it, you know, to the certain levels that I've, you know, success levels that I've achieved. So that's just the same thing with this business. And I'll tell you what, when I go there, and I'm on the road four days a week, I've been on the road for three and a half years straight, it's a grueling schedule, it's so consuming. So for me to do it and do it for four days of the week and then come home and just be me and be a normal person with my family and my friends, that's important and that's what makes the difference. And have you been approached? Have you been hit on by other guys in, in, in the locker room, so to speak? You know, I, I really haven't because I think I give off this kind of, um, you know, like, like your little sister kind of vibe. You know, like guys like to hang out with me. I'm kind of like That's the so girl guy. That's so wrong. That is so <laughs> wrong. You just don't want to answer the question, which I respect. No, but, honestly, but I are mean, you going to sit here and tell me I've, that I've you had give the, off? You know what it is? I've, I've given off that, like, right away, I give off the vibe. If it's like, if they come to me, it's like, so, I'll be like, are you talking to me? It's almost like silly. It's almost, you know, I put it in that perspective right off the bat so they know what they're dealing You're with. You're different than the other women. And often when, when you act differently, people perceive you as feeling you're better than them. Mm -hmm. ha has that put a barrier between you and other women on the roster? Because as you've said, everything they've done, you've mm -hmm. tried not to do. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're doing it the wrong way or, the ba or a bad Absolutely way, though. Absolutely not. Yeah, not just, no. just to be different. But um, no, you know what? The locker room is... Uh, we have re realized that it's certainly a group effort when we go out there. I mean, I've, okay, put it this way. I've won, um, the, you know, the championship four times. I've been women's champ four times in a row. Well, I couldn't have done that if I didn't have four, you know, strong characters that I've worked with in order to make my feud that much better and make my fights mean that much more if I didn't have all these girls to work with. You know, and it's like, and the Diva franchise, I mean, I've been, you know, Babe of the Year for three years in a row. Well, we created this Diva franchise where people are interested in seeing these magazines and seeing these DVDs we do now. So, you know, I mean, we all know it's a group effort and we all are making our money off of each other regarding the Diva franchise. She's Trish Stratus, and one of the fascinating things about you is that you were a Canadian, you still are a Canadian, and your roots go back uh, to the city that we're talking in, mm -hmm. the country that we're in, and we'll talk about those roots when OTR returns. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. You know, I'm watching that. That's from your DVD, of course. I just have to say, look how young you look. That's really nice. And, <laughs> and, and that was what? Because I was watching you, that was what? From 15 years ago? You right. look totally different. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, we've both touched up the grays. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done a lot more than touch up the grays. So, well, if you're going to battle you me, I'm going to blonde. battle I have you. Blonde. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but I, I, one of the things that was so cool about that was the fact that, do you really think I look younger there? <laughs> is the way you were working the crowd though you, you kept you were looking over and you were working it and that was probably your first television appearance ever right yeah well you know what had happened is I'd been on the show a couple times so my presence was felt well, that was your first that was your first appearance on the show that was my that first was your first appearance on the show so at that point no, you'd never been gosh look you know, at that right off the bat so I, I, I am a natural then you were working the crowd <laughs> yeah I was you know I watched that back and that footage came up when we were putting the DVD together and I couldn't I'm like wow look at me go and I couldn't believe that I was already doing that back then you know what I mean are you shocked that you ended up where you where you ended up 
I'm not shocked because I, I, everything I've done in life, when I focus on it and go for it, I tend to get it. You didn't grow up dying to be a, a, a wrestler, a wrestling manager, did you? Because a lot of guys, because we were, we were kicking around names, because I mm -hmm. thought, you know, not a lot of wrestlers were. And then Bob Mackwoods was telling me, well, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. We're going through a whole list of guys who really grew up craving. Like a hockey player in Canada grows mm -hmm. up wanting to play in the NHL. Mm -hmm. But you, you weren't like that, were you? Well, I'll tell you the difference is um, now I have a lot of girls who are 13 years old, 14 years old. And they're like, when I grow up, I want to be a diva. I want to be like Trish Stratus. I want to be a woman in wrestling. Back then, there was not that, there, that option wasn't there. I mean, there was no real presence of women, you know, or, or something that you can aspire to, I guess. Um, so no, there, I mean, I never, I was a fan of it my entire life. As a child, I was, you know, a big fan. I enjoyed it. I, I appreciate it for what it was, but I never, you know, I never figured. Who is it I your thought? life, wrestling? Absolutely. Oh, it is? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. It's so consuming. Every day, I mean, because, because you're, you know, I'm, I'm, you're constantly struggling with trying to reinvent yourself, and you don't want to become stale. You want to think, what can I do? I'm always trying to, you know, perform better than my last, and, you know, go over the, the go over my last Are you a lifer? And, um, Are you going to leave it? Well, I'll tell you this. I know that as long as I can keep giving 100% of what I'm giving out there, I'll be giving it. And if I can't, then I don't want to do less than 100%. Uh, I want to eventually, um, I do want to have a family. I want to settle down and, and I want to enjoy my children when I'm, you know, not old. I want to enjoy them when I'm young. So that's, you know, I look at that. But, you know, there's the option of going away, taking a break, having a real life, doing some normalcy, coming back. You know? It's tough to do because in, in what you do, regardless of your quality as a wrestler, you are still there because you're an attractive person. And, and the history of women in wrestling mm -hmm. is not one for longevity. Right. As soon as you start looking in a certain way, as, certain, oh, yeah. as soon as there's a sag in a certain area, all of a sudden, it's somebody else who's replacing And I'm you. very aware of that. And when I say giving 100%, this is what I mean by that as well. This needs to be 100% as well because i got to give them what they expect from me. Could you, you give know? up the spotlight, though? Because, I mean, you didn't want it, but now you got it. Mm -hmm. And now, wherever you go, people know you. When you walk into an arena and there's 35,000 people there, they're on their feet. And you could sit here and say, you know what, that doesn't mean anything to me. But it means something to everyone. Right. Are you addicted to it? Um, I'm used to it. It's just part of my life. It's just, I accept it as that's part of my life, you know. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if I, I mean, until it's gone, you don't know. Can if you, you give can. it up, do you think? I, that's why I can't say that until it's gone. I can't, I can't evaluate that situation. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I'm sure I'll miss it. And there's definitely perks that you miss. You know, I mean, I think of it all the time how I don't line up for a single thing. I don't like how I, I do literally sit back once in a while and go, I'm really lucky. I mean, I don't, you know, I get some good stuff out of this, you know, and it's neat. And of course I get, you know, all these great opportunities that come my way as well due to my positioning. And, you know, who would have thought as a wrestler, my positioning as a wrestler gets me, you know, some You take bumps, don't you? Like real bumps. Yes. You, you do stuff that when you watch the tape, you go, well, that's pretty risky. Mm -hmm. Do you have your health now? Do I have my health? Yeah. Now? Yeah. Like you're not walking with a limp. I'm good right now. You know, Lita was just right on. Now. Um, you know, Adam Copeland, Edge, um, mm -hmm. was just on. Mm -hmm. um, he's been talking about his his rehabbing. Mm -hmm. I mean, your sport, your industry is dominated by people who get crippled by what they do. You mm -hmm. got your health. Why not? Why not look at that as a blessing and say, you know what? I don't want to push it too long. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I guess. As much as I can, I go out there and be as safe as I can. You know, just as you know, when you go out there and you want to give your all every time, and sometimes that'll result in an injury, but it's never planned, and, and we're always taking every precaution to get to be safe and to do, you know, not not take these unnecessary risks. Do you see That's people key. who have stuck around too long? You're talking about, you know, I want to make sure I'm 100%. Do you look at anybody else in the roster? And I'm going to ask you for who you think it is that should retire, because guys in your industry tend to be a lot more open and honest than others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do you see uh, others that you say, you know what, you should probably give it up? Um, you, what I have seen is obviously an influx of um, older personalities coming back and I think someone like Hulk Hogan did it right. I think he came back when people were still interested. I think while he was there with that first initial interest, he turned it around and got us reinterested and then he left. And I don't know if he's coming back, you know, but I mean, the way he did it, that's kind of something I might do. You know, I, as long as that interest is there, he came back and gave 100% right. of what he can get. Hulk's an example of a guy, an, an older guy who's, who's way past it, who doesn't wrestle much. Mm -hmm. He's just there because he's got charisma in the ring and people love Hulk, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're a woman, you can't do that, can you? You can't rely on what you were. It's all oh, about yeah. what no, you are. I don't think so. I think, Dev, no, you, you will change. We, we age. Not as gracefully. I well, think. you know what? Um, that that tape was, I guess, from 1998. Uh -huh, the I aging think. process has been very graceful and very slow for you. Trish Stratus, <laughs> you know what? It's tough. You give what? good answers, smart answers. <laughs> we'll talk about being Canadian and what that means okay. next on OTR. Great.
expert, a fitness guru. And what a hike, oh, man. And Kevin, what about the rumors that have been flying around? That was your first appearance ever, right? Yes. WWE on, on television, right? Yes, yes. When was that? March of 2000, and I was Sunday, Sunday Night Heat. And I went out there to scout my, uh, my, my, the team I'd be managing, Test and Albert, TNA. Test being a Canadian, right? Yes. Edge, Chris Jericho, Chris Benoit, mm -hmm. Lance Storm. The list is huge of right. Canadians. If you look at that company and the Canadian influence, it's enormous. Yeah. For you, how big a part uh, of, of what you are, of what you do, is being Canadian? Well, who I am, I mean, because I, I'm Canadian and I've been molded to, you know, I've grown up here. I'm, I am who I am because I live in Canada and I'm Canadian. Um, it is pretty amazing to see the numbers as how many Canadians there are. And uh, I often get asked, you know, is it, is it something about being Canadian that makes you a better wrestler or something like that? No, I don't think so. But um, as a woman, and I tell you this, I'm very lucky to be a woman in Canada and to have this kind of the high profile I do within the company because I tell you all across Canada, it's like this, it's just a different level. You know, I've, I've had opportunities come my way that I don't think would have came to my way if I was an, Amer an American. You know, like Flair magazine was a fashion magazine we did. Um, and I, I was the cover of the magazine. So, I mean, if I was American, I probably wouldn't be on the cover of a fashion magazine. But I, as, I think now I'm viewed more like a Canadian celebrity as opposed to just a Canadian wrestler or a wrestling girl. And um, Elle magazine recently had an issue and they, called, they had the top 30 power, power list and had powerful women in, in Canada, and that included um, Shania Twain, Celine Dion, Avril Lavigne, and I'm in that list, you know, and that was amazing, and it kind of was like, wow, and to realize the influence and the reach of the company, you know, it was amazing, and I'm lucky that I am a Canadian woman in my position, and I'm able to achieve that. If you look at the history of Canadians in the wrestling industry, Canadians seem to be obsessed not with fame and fortune. That's a bonus, with and we looks. love it as much no. as the next. <laughs> we, we like our looks as much as the next as well. But the one thing that, that all Canadians seem to be obsessed with is credibility in their craft. Mm -hmm. Why is that? And is that a fair generalization? Um, I don't know. Um, I think that... I think it's, it, it, that narrows down to a pool of people, types of people. I think those go-getters, those people that are aggressive in what they do, are those kind of people. And um, I don't think it necessarily reflects their Canadianism or not. Is that a word, Canadianism? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it just it boils down to a, a, a group of people. You hang out just, with the Canadians? Yeah, we like do. Like when you travel? Oh, yeah. You know what's funny is we there definitely is this camaraderie between us. We connect, we relate to things, we, we joke about Canadian things. Do you and fight the office politics thing for the fellow Canadians? Chris Jericho, for instance, mm -hmm. has fought for a position of prominence, and, and he has often complained, as he has on this show and mm -hmm. publicly, that, 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 that he feels undervalued. Would you, would you fight that battle for him and with him? As a Canadian? Or? As a friend. As a friend, because of course. the politics in any sport, but even more so in what you do, is so enormous and so influential. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I think that's everyone that's their own battle to fight. You know what I mean? I was, Have you got involved in the politics at all? I try not to. I mean, you know, if politics mean, you know, in politicking, if it means to go out and, and state my case on certain things, then okay, yes, you're right, I do. But um, I'm, I'm very aware of what I do. Um, I, I pick my battles. You know, I'm very aware of what I'm going to make a stand about, and I'm, I, was, I will stick to my words, like, no matter what. I, if I want to, you know, if I feel a certain way. And I think that um, the company is really good about, like, you can, you know, it's, it's easy enough to go, no, I'm not doing that. But what I try to, try to do is, I'm not going to do that because I think this is better. I think we can get there another way. You know, as long as you're offering something, they're going to work with you, and they really have been great about doing that. And especially that. when your suggestions work. If and, they and don't absolutely. work, and, you know, for they're you, not going to listen you know, next to, time. To go out there and do something, if you're not feeling it, you can't portray that out there, and you're not going to get that feeling across. So you, it's necessary to have that comfort level. Let's go to break. As we go to break, we want to know your thoughts on the issues and questions for our guests and all of that. Hey, Trish, please tell me your DVD special features have more than just a lousy Spanish version. I already know you are muy caliente. Caliente. <laughs> Will you tell us about the DVD? I'm sure yeah. you probably will do that. That'd be great. No, Michael, I don't want to talk about what I'm promoting. We'll do that when we return. Don't ask me about that. I hold in my hand the DVD. I was going to hold it up unless I was able to evaluate through the show. I'd like to say you're a bitch because you've had huge success <laughs> because seriously, you're doing what a lot of people want to do, but, but you're not at all. You're exactly what you were five years ago when we met you, and that's a, it's a true credit to your upbringing and who you are. I think it's wonderful. Great Thank to you. see you. Thank you. So, having said that, tell me about this DVD. Um, well, I'm, I'm so excited about it. You know, I, it's, it takes you through the entire journey of when I came into the WWE, 
along the way. So from, from 2000 till now, it tells you my career, the evolution of my character. And along the way, it talks about all the different people I've worked with and interviews from you know the Dudley boys and all my major feuds along the way. So that's exciting. And it's kind of cool because we do some backstage stuff and you see some like candid moments, like me and Stone, Co Stone Cold Steve Austin having a candid moment, which you would never see probably on the show as of now. And so that's kind of neat to see us in real life. And, uh, and then, of course, you have my friends and family speaking on there about who I was growing up and basically telling everyone who or how I became the person I am today. Um, and then there's some great extras. You got some, some special uh, matches on there. And Muy caliente. Muy caliente. Caliente. And you know what? There's actually my very favorite part of that is um, there's a bloopers reel. I, I actually, I got really involved in the process. You know, I, I was aware that eventually I perhaps would have a video. And so I, I decided I wanted certain things said. I wanted the full story to be told. And so I ended up producing it. So it's my producing debut it's right here. And I literally sat down with this interview. I styled it so that I could tell this interview as one big you know, thing. And then we would just drop in footage and interviews. So of course, I'm sitting there for five hours doing this interview for, to get this all together. And I mean, I'm delirious and I'm crazy by the end of this. And uh, so at the end of it, they put a little special in there. It was an Easter egg. <laughs> and it's a, it's a bloopers reel. And you see me being Trish Stratus. Well, you know what, Trish? I'm really <laughs> looking forward to seeing it. And, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, media, we don't get one, <laughs> whatever. I want to throw out some names. I want your reaction okay. um, to them. Um, let's start off with Stacey Keebler. Um, Stacey Keebler's very aware of what she brings to the table, and she uses it to, the, to her best advantage. Sad story, obviously, Miss Elizabeth. Um, you know, obviously she was a, the, the, the first woman that made a real presence within the industry, so she has that, and, uh, and it's just sad. An influence on you? Not so much. I was see instead of looking at Miss Elizabeth, I was watching Rand, Randy Macho Man Savage. You know, so. The Rock. Amazing. Um, so proud of him. Um, I admire him so so much. And actually, he has, he's actually been a, a friend along the way who's actually guided and really molded my career. He's really helped me to to find that balance between entertainer and uh, and, and performer and being athletic and being entertaining at the same time. Is there resentment in the locker room? He shows up twice a year. He's wildly successful. I don't think so because I think when you are that good, you can't deny that. You know, it's not like he, it was just given to him. He really has earned it, and he's really that good, and I think people respect that. We're out of time. You may be that good, but you are clearly that nice. Trish Stratus, <laughs> great having on OTR. We're so, so proud. It was so great to be back. It really was. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Michael Landsberg's wardrobe supplied by Grafton & Company. Get it at Grafton.